Uh, hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to talk about plasma cutting, uh, specifically 5-axis plasma cutting. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that I have here is this flange. And uh, just like any other job, uh, you create a, a new job and then you define the type of job it is. So for plasma, uh, even though it doesn't say uh, plasma as a job type, uh, we would consider it a milling type and we would use a plasma type machine. So we were doing uh, plasma laser, water jet. I mean, the, these are all uh, supported. Um, they're all shape 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 cutting type machines. So in this case, I'm going to do a three axis plasma. I'm going to run my stock wizard, you know, set my, uh, set my origin, and I'm ready to start cutting. Now, for regular two-axis cutting, like these internal holes, I'm just going to do a two-axis routine. I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, select the holes that I want to work with. You know, from there, I, uh, I can use just like uh, profile rough or profile finish. Either of these will work. When we're dealing with the plasma cutter, uh, we're going to define the cutting tool that we're going to use, and then we have just different M codes that we can fire. Uh, depending on the machine that you're working on, uh, you may or may not need or even have access to... Uh, uh, the different M codes that some machines need. Sometimes it's just very straightforward, like a Bernie, you know, flame on, flame off. Sometimes you want to dwell in there. And, and all of that is really handled by the post processor. And what is needed to be sent uh, will vary from machine manufacturer to machine manufacturer. So you have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different M codes that you can fire from the tool page. Uh, you have your feed rate in which you're cutting along, pierced well. And again, sometimes this uh, this is handled by the control as well. So it just depends on what machine you're working with. But there's a couple more variables here. Torch control, a lot of times you have um, uh, THC where the control handles it. Sometimes you, you want to give it a certain distance and that's posted. So again, just depends on the machine. And then uh, here we have an arc slowdown. So, you know, when the when the tool path encounters a, a radius, uh, it will, uh, you can make it, you know, 50% of your cutting feed rate and have it slow down okay so so we have our tool set up here this will be uh fine for whatever we were looking for okay and then i uh, you know we're just going to do a standard profile you have your kerf comp or cutter comp g41 g42 uh, you can have that off you can have it on you can have um you can uh, i'm sorry system comp is when bobcat offsets for uh the the tooling and machine comp is for your G41, G42, and you can combine these different comp settings. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to let Bobcat offset for the cutter. Uh, we're not going to leave any stock. Uh, from there, we'll add a lead in. So we'll do like a right angle lead in, and then we'll do a circular, um, a circular lead out. And then we'll add a little bit of an overlap and compute. Now, uh, let me go back here as well. You can see that there's this depth. Uh, the software does support uh, three-axis plasmas, but a lot of time, uh, the again, the torch height control or the Z position would be handled by the controller. So here we can see we have our lead in, we have it cut around, we have it lead out. Uh, we can adjust the size of those lead ins, but that would be for a straight cut. Now, on this outside shape here, you can see that there's uh, a taper uh, or a bevel, and um, Bobcat does support this type of plasma cutting as well. It's uh, it's set up a little bit different uh, here, and so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, what I'm going to do is blank out my stock. Let me go ahead and blank out my tool path. Uh, from here, I'm going to extract some wireframe from from the edge of this surface here and then uh, I'll blank out my model. Okay, so we use a five axis trimming tool path to program, uh, to program the uh, a five axis plasma or shape cutter. So I need a drive curve and I need orientation lines. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw in some orientation lines. And what these do 
is they'll control the the tilt of the tool uh, as it's going around this surface here okay so we have our drive curve which is going to be this top curve here and we have our orientation lines and uh, that's about all that we need no normally I would want them pointing up in the other direction but uh, this should work out just fine we'll do mill multi-axis this is going to be a wireframe routine all right uh, we have our cutter. We're going to use the same site as cutter. Same uh, same settings that we talked about before. So you can set what the what the feed rate is and pierced well and uh, torch height control. Uh, we're going to get into our parameters. So we have our drive curves. Our drive curves is going to be this uh, line here. Then we have our orientation line and uh, or lines. And I'm just going to go around and select our orientation lines. Um, from there, our tool axis control, this is going to be 5 axis, and tilt from line is going to be 0. And uh, we'll go ahead and compute that. And then that gives us our uh, tilted profile. Now, we may want to draw a lead in here. If we, <clears throat> if we draw a lead in, we'll just draw a perpendicular line, and then we'll add a perpendicular um, tilt as well. So it, it pierces at um, a vertical and then uh, works its way in. But this is how we program... Uh, we program uh, five axis plasma. So here we can see uh, we have our tool path up on the screen. Now when we go to simulate this, uh, right now I have a three axis machine. I'm going to switch this over to, let me see. I want to switch this over to a, a five axis machine. If I try to simulate this right now, um, it's, it's going to yell at me. It's going to tell me that it's not for a uh, three-axis machine. So, and uh, I don't have a five-axis plasma built right now, so I would just use uh, a head-head uh, router. But the workflow that we followed here, this is the this is the workflow that we would use for really any of these. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at the square tubing. Uh, this is a, another example where you may use a, a laser, a plasma. I'm just going to copy this file into a new one here. Okay, so from here, just going to turn off some of the stuff and change the color of it from blue to gray. Let me change that too. All right, so now we have our, our square tubing here. So this time I'm going to choose a head-head uh, orientation. So that's where the rotation is all done in the head. Um, we're going to go ahead and... Um, run this through so we'll set up our stock here and we'll set our zero position which is fine and then I'm just gonna go ahead and blank out the stock so now I'm gonna I'm gonna work with the same thing here I need a drive curve and orientation lines so I'm gonna add a new layer make it active uh, from here I'm gonna do utilities uh, extract edges single and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to grab the sidewall of these cutouts here. Now, if we're, you can see that there's some holes on this part on the other side. To machine those holes, really, like if, if you're just on a face of the part, you can use an index system. So you can index and cut in uh, two axis. All right, so now we have... We have our drive curve, and then we also have our orientation lines. Uh, from here, you know, I'm going to join up. I'm going to do line join. I'm just going to add some more uh, here. You know, I want to I want to make sure that this tilts around here. Uh, so I'm going to join a line between here and here just to add uh, some more tilt control. Okay. All right. So this looks uh, this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back to this routine here and I'm just going to copy that feature and then I'm going to uh, paste it into the tree because uh, I already have it set up so I will just come into my parameters. I have my drive curve. Uh, this is going to be this line here. So I'm just selecting around. Usually I'll put this stuff on different layers or different colors. You know, prep the file a little bit different. But all right, so we got those done. And then we have our orientation lines. So I'm just going to select these. 
around. Oh, let me turn that off. Okay. That looks good. Let's go ahead and compute. You, we have these uh, orientation lines, so let's uh, let's look at them. <laughs> so I'm going to click on the orientation lines, and then I'm going to do modify start point. Okay, and you can see how each of these have arrows, right? So we have arrows, arrows. What we want to do is see how these are pointing the wrong way. We actually, we want to make sure that all of our orientation lines uh, are pointing the correct way. All right, and the correct way would be out in this direction. Let's look at these here. Yep, there they are. So I'll click those. Switch them, that looks good. That looks good. All right, that should solve that. Let's go ahead and compute. All right, there we go. Now, one of the other things you'll notice here is um, I have a, a rapid. This is a rapid of the toolpath. So you have to pay attention to your um, retracts, where the tool's going to go. Right now I have it set to a plane. Um, I just need to increase this plane so that it's greater than the stock because I've zeroed on the center of the part. So if I make that five, that will go go up like that. So now you can see using the same toolpath that we had on um, the flange with the bevel, now we can use the same toolpath for square tubing where we're going, um, you know, cutting uh, around the corner. Okay. So if we look at this again, if we go back in here, let's turn that one off. I also have uh, a pipe with some coping, and this is going to be the same uh, same type of process. Let me just copy this file over, create a new layer, blank those out, edit, paste. Okay, so now I have this uh, this new model here. So we got this set up. That looks good. Uh, let me blank this out. Let me blank this tool path. So we need to do the same thing. I'm just going to create a new layer, extract edges, uh, utilities, extract edges single. And I'm going to pick on um, this surface here. And then I'll turn the other one off. I think I got two edges here. So, All right. Now, from here, I just want to join up, line join. You know, I want, to, I want to get some of these orientation lines. So I have two here. I'm going to break this up a little bit more. So break, divide, um, two pieces and two pieces. So that would give me some more um, orientation lines. So I can go from there to there and from there to there. Okay, looks good. Now we'll just come back in. We're going to change our drive curve. Our drive curve is going to be this top one here. All right, then we'll select our orientation lines. And, okay, so we got that one there. This one here. That one there. Looks good. Uh, let's compute it. If it yells at us, then we know, right, uh, anti anti-parallel tool orientations. So those are our orientation lines. Oh. And what we want to do is modify the start point. We want to make sure that they're all pointing outward. And it looks like they are. I have... Um, all right, so let me remove reselect. Sorry about that. I still had the other shape in the background. So I'll remove that. Uh, reselect these so I got those my drive curve see when you high uh, when you click on your drive curves or your geometry selection it will preview what you have so obviously I didn't remove it so let me get these going as well let me verify my start points so that looks good this one let's get that going the right direction get that one going the right direction Get this one going the right direction. Okay, looks good. 
All right, let's compute. And now we can see we have our bevel here as well. So you can repeat this process for the different holes. It doesn't matter where, whether it's uh, cylindrical uh, tubing, square, uh, square tubing, um, you know, or a basic flange. All, all of this is supported uh, using the five-axis standard that Bobcat offers. So I appreciate you guys spending some time with me here today. I'm sure you may have some additional questions, so feel free to reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, guys.